foremost, I would like to thank you uh, to take your time to participate in this project. So I'm very happy to have you here. And uh, yeah, first, uh, I would like you to just to introduce yourself for the um, uh, people who are going to watch this video and especially uh, maybe some people in Europe or US, they actually uh, don't really know that Philippines is a big basketball country and uh, basketball is a uh, number one sport over there. So just uh, let us know uh, how you get to 3x3 basketball and some words about your coaching career and teams you work with. Yeah, uh, yeah. Good, uh, good evening. Or how are you? Thank you, Dimitri, for inviting me here and uh, you know, uh, giving out some of my you know uh, experiences for TX3 basketball. Uh, uh, since uh, 2015, I was uh, appointed as head coach of the Philippine women's basketball team. Head coach, so uh, it's they call it Gilas Filipinas women's basketball team. So. I've been uh, coaching uh, women's for almost, I mean, more than 15 years already. Uh, I also handle uh, a school team, a university team, uh, the National University. We've been champion for the past six years already, and uh, our record is 96 and 0. So it's a great uh, ride for us, and hopefully we continue our winning streak and hopefully get through that. Uh, Winning, uh, winning record by the University of Connecticut, uh, UConn for 111. So, but anyway, um, thank you again. And uh, I really started coaching 3XT for the boys, where I was the one of the first few coaches that was uh, uh, very active with 3XT. Uh, we, we were sent to Qatar a few years back. Uh, so I was part of the maiden 3x3 basketball tournaments we don't there were there were a lot of uh, uh, rules have changes through the years and but it's getting very 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 exciting and you know this this sport uh, is very cool among us Filipinos because you know we're not that we're not that big but uh, but talent wise we have it so I, I think Part of it of being a, a country love of basketball, uh, they have been really following every basketball games, every three XC tournament, uh, and it was a very uh, first time big event coming here for the World Cup in 2017. It was held here. Uh, it was a great experience for us, especially us women's part that we the first time we really participate in a world class tournament like that and. All those experience came out to us that you know, if really focus and uh, and suppose like you know maybe uh, spend more time with the women, we may, we might get there someday you know with the top of the world class. So, but but for now we're really struggling because of uh, you know the budget and other. But the, but now the our association, Samahanam Basketball Filipinas, is very supportive of us right now. And last year was the most uh, tournament that we, we participated. And uh, I'm so happy to, you know, be part of it. And coaching the, the youth and the women's uh, open is very overwhelming, uh, overwhelming for us. And it's a very successful year for us last year. And hopefully we could, you know, do more in the coming years. And today I think we're going to talk about uh, decision making. Uh, uh, long three x three, and uh, having uh, you know, having that experience and, and being part of the being part of the coaching staff, it made me a lot of thinking on how decision making should be introduced to players. And actually, it, it started you know by you know ex experiencing it on how and asking about other coaches how how you do it, how you prepare for the for the team and how how you get players to to support the the, the program and all of those stuff and you know uh, so um, well decision making for me it starts whether it's uh, it's about the proper preparation for a game or to or what to focus during skills uh, decision making so although challenging to teach them it's it's it has to have skills 
uh, with the players. You know, they have they have they have to have skills and talents to to have that success. And uh, and and probably uh, you know uh, developing and understanding how decision making process. Uh, it would be very, it would be better equipped the way athletes should approach decision on the court throughout their lives. Uh, it's about teaching your players how to decide. It is more effective than what to decide. You know, you know what I mean. Uh, it's how you you teach your players on whether you do this, you do that, and then letting them decide on their own during the court. So you gotta have that. Uh, preparedness going to the game or going to the tournament so uh, how, how, how we do it you know we, we start with practice uh, uh, we create games like situation in practice uh, making the players understand key elements of the game like uh, knowing your strength your weaknesses the place of the other team your place especially and how do you defend a post-up player how do you how do you prepare uh, defending a pick and roll player or pick and roll? How do you go about recovering uh, and all those stuff? And uh, making those uh, situations uh, for them and realizing what kind of uh, teaching that we suppo they're supposed to learn, uh, it will be very simple in coming to the game. So, and we also have. Um, we also have problem solving, how to read and react with a given situation. We try to maximize, do a classroom setup and maximize their knowledge about how do we understand to go about the place, how do we come about on situations. We give them situations that uh, uh, we pretend, we predict that it would be uh, happening with the game. So. All of those stops that uh, uh, we try to, you know, try to make it a point that they have, they know and have the knowledge and to do what's the best way or the better way of executing and, and making good decision. Uh, example, it's example like the 10 seconds uh, with 10 seconds uh, to go on a game, you know, uh, the shot clock, uh, what do we go about, how do we you know, how, where do we want to go? Like, we want to go to the post first, then then go out and kick out to an open man or create create for an open open man. When the, when the defense collapses, you try to kick out and then you rotate. And first thing that we, you know, we should, we should always um, maybe uh, profile our team is that we need more spacing. The spacing should be, should be very, very, you know, appropriate with what system do you play or what kind of uh, place do you do you go through, and uh, and in that part, creating space makes the situation or your game decision making comes in with the read and react situation from the defense. So, uh, so we we see more areas to operate on that. So uh, I mean, there will be a lot more options and. And you know, <clears throat> creating more for your players or your teammates to go with that. And uh, aside from uh, aside from you know, uh, we call you know what about three X three X C? There's there's no coach in coaching them during games, so we have to prepare the system of how to solve. So they have to know all those on the situation about the game. So it's whether you need a big on the floor, you need three smalls on the floor. So they know they know they know the rules on on how to sub on that, and we we try to explore that by giving them situation on display that you, uh, there's a big man, so we have a big man that can double up and try to rotate on on some, and then sometimes there's small guys on the floor, so we need more quick guys on the floor trying to try to probably depend on on the weak guys on the small guys too so those are samples of you know um, uh, creating game like situation for them so more practice we, we really do more practice on that and uh, telling them uh, that you need to do this shots then 
we prepare another move for them and come about. And just, just to recognize more scoring opportunities for them. The second part would be film viewing. Uh, important for players to see how they play. Ask them, like, you know, in the classroom, like, you know, you ask them, what were you thinking on this situation? And then you explain to them, I think this is a more uh, appropriate uh, decision option or appropriate option coming into that uh, so that they will know during the games, when they come to uh, such situation again, they'll know what to do. And probably seeing them and uh, filming them every day and filming them during games and then letting them see what they what are they doing, make them more uh, more aware of their options during the game. So do you think the best decision at this point of time is, is driving at the basket and creating for your teammates or maybe maybe giving it up to the to the big guy and then following away with the screen or you know all those uh, all those systems there'll be a lot more system a lot of plays coming into the game and I'm just uh I'm just happy that, you know, 3X3 is so evolving around the world that, you know, uh, even us small country can really compete with other big countries. And uh, just happy to that uh, uh, that uh, knowing their strengths and weaknesses is, is a way of uh, preparing for teams, uh, preparing for a game or tournament. So, uh, against big teams. Another is breaking down the games of the opponent. Uh, one one style that we we, sh we 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 do is we simulate their game their game or plays uh, on practice so that uh, we are prepared on what situation coming up to the tournament or to the game so that they'll know that having uh, counter offense or counter defense or preparing for a defensive of assignment uh, for the opponent will make them more real, realize on how uh, how the how the things goes. You, you know, uh, um, in some in some ways, you know, as a coach, uh, even given given with an X and O, sometimes it doesn't really follow. You know, and so, but but having aware awareness of your confidence or your Familiarity with your teammate makes us makes us be very conscious of what we do and how to exploit those. One one should what we should we think is maybe players should know the strengths and weaknesses of each and every one at first. So that's one one point and know their their uh, their their worthy on the court and how they how they play how they move on the court. So. Uh, how do they react? So familiarities of having your teammates, uh, uh, having familiarity with your teammates, make us more better in making decision making. So I always tell to the girls, uh, to the girls that you know, sometimes our X and O's does, doesn't follow, but you have the right to create in situation like that that can not create for your own, but you create for the team itself or your teammate. So. That's that's how we do it. Um, uh, probably another one is 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 sometime I had a, I had a <clears throat> I had a um, example with my players. I had a, a very big guy, about six five girl, but she's not mobile. So how how do we how do we how do we approach and getting her her uh, to have you know a scoring. Uh, more involved with the game or how do we prepare her for you know her advantage on the court so sometimes we do we do more we do more picks from the top and they making her move from 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 the elbow going to the post and and by doing those uh, reaction or drills uh, they try we, we maximize her height we maximize our decision making uh, on the court, because we know that he can be, she can be a part of, uh, you know, the game and and take that ad they they, sorry, take that height advantage of her. So those are real real things that uh, the things that we 
The last one is probably court awareness. Uh, what is court awareness only? We, I call it time and score. You know, when there's a, when when you when you say time and score, you take a look at the time and the score uh, on the score situation. Well, which is if they're leading by by as much as five points, or you know, you have to have the decision making get more three points or make two point shots. So that's that's part of it. When now you're leading by at least two or three points, now it's time to waste time and uh, probably uh, milk the clock and probably uh, force to like you know make some um, ball movement and then going to the basket in the last seconds of the game of uh, the the clock. So those are the, the things of court awareness comes to us in preparing games and hoping that the girls would, you know, really play uh, and how, how they make decision on the court. And another one thing that we do is probably uh, is making them, you know, comfortable with each other outside the court, you know. Uh, having, you, know, you have to bond them together. They, they, they eat together, do things together for, for quite some time so that they know all the things that, uh, the, the players would know about themselves. And I think that preparedness uh, or bonding itself would prepare them more in the coming games. They, they know that, you know, you are being backed up by the other players and, and hopefully, you know, they, they come to a game and be prepared all the time. So that's, the, that's how we do it uh, for decision-making by players. So if there's any questions, uh, that, uh, that, yeah, that's awesome. It's, uh, it was uh, extremely interesting to uh, hear, and uh, even uh, several questions I already have on my list you actually almost uh, answered. Uh, but anyway, I'll go through. Uh, yeah, but uh, what I wanted to point out a couple of things that, uh, yeah, what I love about 3x3 as well. That, that, yeah, that, that this team uh, you have, it's like a family. Yeah, and what you told about the last thing, like to bind them together to do some kind of team building and uh, team chemistry. Yeah, here is extremely important, I think, because five, uh, five on five, it's a big team. It's a big uh, amount of people and uh, it's a bit different there. There are bench players, there are starting five. Uh, someone plays more minutes, someone plays less minutes. But here, they have to be like a family, literally. Uh, and for decision making, I think it's uh, extremely important. Mm -hmm. And another point that you told that, yeah, uh, even small nations uh, yes. can compete on a world level. That's also a beauty about the 3x3, I think. Because you, you yes. can see here in 3x3 mm -hmm. world how the countries, uh, which never uh, get uh, really high in the 5 and 5 basketball, like uh, Mongolia, let's say, or even the Netherlands, yeah. uh, or where I'm from, uh, how can we be successful in 3x3? That's the beauty of the game, I think. Uh, so uh, almost every country can find uh, four uh, players in different age categories and uh, present <coughs> teams. And okay, let's get back to the, um, uh, our topic. Um, uh, so one of the questions I want to discuss, uh, you already got the points, I think, but to sum it up, What's the difference uh, in decision making uh, between 3x3 and 5x5 five five basketball? Uh, what do you think? Well, I, uh, first of all, 3x3 is a fast game. So, not unlike the 5x5, the five five, you know, you can slow down the game and a coach would realize to tell, uh, tell everybody, uh, slow down the game or tell them to go fast. It depends on the situation, right? So, but here in 3x3, with the time limitation, it's very, very fast game, you know. Uh, so, and there's no coach in the game. That's one point, you know. They need to know what to do on the court by themselves. And uh, uh, pointing out all of those, uh, like, creating situation, uh, uh, reacting from uh, recoveries and everything. They need to do. So, so uh, it's it's you you have to really train them during practice at the same at, at, at the uh, how to think on on whether to react on this kind of situation what's the best best reaction how how it would be uh, the movement after that so it's really really very fast and uh, I think the more 3xt uh, decision making 
uh, process is that uh, it's more what you call uh, maybe maybe more exciting in, in such a way that uh, the time is so small and it can switch from you're up once in a while then you go down for like in a few minutes a few seconds and so you gotta react really quick on this so I think uh, uh, the uh, the difference is the the reaction time is very quick, and you know time is on your not the time is not on your side when 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 there's T X T. Yeah, that's a very good point. I think yeah, that's for sure the main uh, difference. And in three X three, every single player uh, has to make at least I think twice more decisions than uh, during five and five game, and they touch the ball. Uh, much more often than on five and five. Sometimes on five and five, several role players, let's say, they can spend the time in the corner, and other four players they make an offensive set, and uh, a player has a specific role and almost no decisions. Yeah, even only catch and shoot or something. Yeah, in three three XT, it's impossible. Everyone is uh, involved in the action. The actions are very fast, and uh, what you also pointed out already. And then what is also very interesting for me, I think, uh, also as a difference from five and five, but as a separate question, uh, apart from decision making in every single action, let's say during the game, like uh, on a closeout situation, someone catches the ball and then uh, the girl has to decide whether she can shoot if the defense is too far or if it's a hard closeout, she can pass by. Uh, and you go to the to the basket for a drive, or pass to the partner. Let's say, yeah. Uh, th that's a on play situation. But uh, in three x three game, as well, players, as you told it, no, there is no coach, and the players have to decide about the tactics as well, how the game evolved, uh, what to do. As you know, it's like we're down five or we're up five. Whether we go for more two point shots, whether we uh, go to the rim or if it's a foul trouble uh, by your team or if it's a foul trouble uh, by the opponent's team so uh, maybe we can penetrate a lot when to take a timeout what to do in a timeout what to discuss uh, and as you also pointed before the game as a preparation uh, uh, what is the role of the players there do you as a coach uh, take the leadership to uh, prepare them uh, for the opponent and like give them the most instructions, very strict instructions, or do you let the players some kind of freedom to discuss by themselves as well before the game? What can we do uh, in this or that situation? So this is the question. Yeah, and, and first of all, you know, uh, in selecting players, I think uh, they know should they should know all the you know they can play all the right position. Uh, on the court, and that's one part that I, when I select players, they know they can post up. Even though you're small, they can post up. If you're big, you can shoot from the outside, and all of those stuff. And definitely, uh, we we teach them on on all the all the moves that you could you could magically uh, take advantage of every time you're in the court. Uh, your uh, your your strength, of course, uh, would be more. Uh, exceptional in 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 executing the place. Uh, so sorry. So um, practice. It's just need of constant practice. Uh, the chemistry is developed not just overnight, but more constant practice. Uh, putting uh, giving them more information, not just how the opponent plays, but how they can build more about uh, their strength and their weaknesses. If they're weak on this panel side of the play, if they cannot shoot, they should practice more shooting. They would give them all of those things. So when, you know, again, tournament comes, they always could be prepared already. And uh, let's say uh, the timeout situations, uh, let's discuss that. Uh, uh, are there, in your teams mostly, are there some kind of a leader in the timeout who let's say, 
mainly yeah. defines the play or the, the tactics afterwards? Or uh, is it the total democracy? Like everybody has the equal rights to discuss uh, how is it in your team? No, I, have, I have a leader, they call him, maybe called Captain Ball of the team. You know, they, they, he's the one who should be uh, standing up for uh, facilitating or standing up among the players. Uh, I think he would be the role uh, of, you know, the, to, or, to orchestrate or organize a team, especially during situation like having to call timeout in situation. But we also tell them that you call timeout in situation that they need by, by more than six or seven something like that or uh, uh, some but uh, but then again when the, the leader talks everybody has the liberty to talk also on what it's not just the, 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 the leader in the court just going to say or the captain of the, of the team will always just say the things but you know everybody should participate in all the inputs and you know so that they could be more organized and like, like tell them, I'm over, always free in the corner. Come on, drive hard, kick it out. Or I'll be driving this. You should be there. So, so mostly, mostly. But you know, uh, communication is one thing that you gotta brought out more on 3XD because of that fast-paced game, uh, that transition they call it, is so fast that uh, it really has no time in in just you know resting for for just a few seconds. So, uh, but it should have a leader on the court, but it doesn't stop there. All the players should make an input of what's happening. Uh, it will be more organized and more cohesive in making decision-making on the court. Yeah, thanks, that's great. Uh, okay, now I wanted to uh, watch uh, several moments from uh, Andreating, um uh, Philippines team on the Asia Cup uh, 2019, where it was uh, great. Uh, actually, from this great uh, bronze medal game against China, where oh. when they upset uh, the former champions, let's say. Yeah, uh, I will share my screen uh, now. Okay. So we'll watch. Okay. Can you see the screen now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Excited. So I just um, picked. Um, Three very fast situations, but um, apart from like, like like we talk, yeah, that's a fast-paced game, and the amount of decisions per second is much uh, more than five and five. Uh, so let's just watch, and then we can discuss uh, how do you practice that or something. Yeah, that's the first one. And the two pointers achieved by. Wu for China. Surada. So let's say this is a quick moment. Yeah, unfortunately she couldn't finish. But uh, what and uh, what I wanted to notice here, yeah, that's a shot, and a, a rebound. And here, yeah. So the the player number twenty one, she brings the ball out. She cleared the ball, and the player number eight. Yeah, she first goes to set a screen, but then she fakes the screen and slips. So that she makes this decision not to set the screen, but to slip uh, uh, by faking the screen. And the player with the ball, the ball handler, also makes the decision here after she sees that her teammate slips the screen. She also has to make a decision whether she can pass to her whether it's a lob pass or whether it's a bounce pass or whether it's no pass at all and she can pass to another teammate uh, who actually pops out at the top uh, she makes actually the good lob pass to number eight uh, it's just a bad luck that she couldn't finish we will finish the moment yeah. Yeah. yes yeah. a pity uh, then another moment here, I think. Yeah, the check ball situation. So this is a great moment. Uh, here is everything on the ball handler. Yeah, uh, we see that uh, the ball handler. She has a great patience. She waited. She watched uh, how 
uh, her teammates actually moved. And then she makes this decision in the end, uh, having awareness of the shot clock as well. Uh, what I noticed here, that she decided to take this drive because she got an open lane on, on the left side of the court, uh, having uh, seven seconds, uh, eight, seven seconds before. So even though she was not, uh, she, she might be not lucky with, with the drive, it's still like six seconds to go. Uh, uh, and the, the team can find another option to attack. Uh, let's watch one more time. Now she's, yeah, she sees and she waits. Uh, she sees the action. Okay, nothing. And now she decides to penetrate. That's a great decision, I think. And the last one, closer to the end of the game. Yeah. Here, it's more about the decision of the player without the ball uh, to uh, take this great backdoor cut. Well, what I wanted to note here. Now, this player um, at the wing. She sees that her defender uh, turns his uh, turns her face a bit uh, and look to the ball more. So she takes this time as an advantage to make a good backdoor cut, and the ball handler uh, passes as well on time, and uh, she makes a good pass. Yes, that's the situation. <laughs> So the, nice. <laughs> yeah, those are like uh, three uh, three things um, mm -hmm. like what, what, which I mm, I think enjoyed mm, most uh, regarding the decision making in this mm, uh, bronze medal game. And uh, the question is, uh, you actually also pointed out that it's more about preparation than the spontaneous decisions. I think so. Uh, uh, how you train these kind of things. So you, you mentioned that you put players in, uh, in this kind of special situations, like uh, uh, five seconds on the shot clock or 10 seconds on the shot clock. Uh, so, uh, and these actions, which we just saw on the video, um, most of them, uh, were they actually trained or uh, are there more or less spontaneous movements uh, in a team? It's more, more I say, what I more will I say, it's more on the time and score situation. Uh, I prepared more of them during, more during on you know on practice time and score situation uh, when there's almost like you know within a play set up like you know we set up a play like eight seconds to go uh, and do this and as much as I have to 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 discuss about the plays but. Uh, it's more on who do we play? You know, we play China. China are big, we're smaller. So I think we're much quicker uh, uh, on, on this game pace. So you can see on that game that we always slide on the picker goals. Because I think uh, when they show up, uh, they're, they're slow in getting back on, 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 our, on our big guys on, on the slide. So I told them on, on that situation, if ever do we have pick and roll, just slide through anytime. And then when you slide through and they, they act, they don't try to double, drop it off. If they don't drop the double, you try to penetrate. If the other uh, the, the wing guy helps you, then you kick it out on the other wing guy. So those are basically the three basic steps that we do on ball screen uh, on that situation. We prepared on that, that you know, when we're, we're, uh, we're facing a situation that the bigger man or the the, the the big man should you should show up on on defense then that's the time you slide so that's one thing and probably we go back a little bit uh, on on that before uh, you can see on that situation also our wing guy on the other side has been really locked down by the by the defender why because on the previous games that we we played she was hitting three points anywhere from the down the court. And that's one part 
that we can take advantage of. If you're seen by your opponent that you are, you're so you're good at outside shooting, then we create more on a mass situation like the two on two uh, aspect. Next again. Next again is that when we play, we do the backdoor play. They know that we we've been doing we've been doing all the ball screen and handing handing off on the top. But never in such place that you know. Once in a while, when you see, when I tell them that when you see your team, your your defender is not looking at you, you go back there. So that's uh, one one good uh, one good options that we provide them. And especially again, uh, we're playing China; they're much slower than us. So uh, so we try to take those advantages during that. When we just uh, before we prepared, we, before we. We did that game. We were watching how China, because China beat us on the elimination round on that game, and we uh, we we told each other that you know you know we can do this, and but we need to do this all the time. You know, every time we do ball speed, we slide right away because they cannot uh, follow us or they cannot uh, match up with our with our speed on that. And again, taking good shots on the first few games and making it. Uh, real that uh, you can take that shot from the outside, and so it takes off another uh, strength from you, but it takes off uh, other options to create for other teams. Yeah, that's a great point, and uh, more and more uh, I see that uh, decision making, and I think it's a uh, important point for everybody that decision making in basketball in general and 3x3 especially it's not about your skill set and uh, spontaneous but it's mm -hmm. about the preparation the general preparation on practices before the game scouting video uh, film study and uh, preparation to the specific opponent uh, that uh, makes the decision making process much easier during the game so you don't run into the Shot clock violations, uh, Russian shots, uh, and uh, other bad decisions. And I think uh, one of the last questions uh, I have here about uh, how do you select players for your team? Uh, and what, how do you feel, how do you see about the qualities you mentioned already? And uh, I think most uh, uh, 3x3 people know that 3x3 player has to be all around. Uh, and you told me if it's big, she has to shoot. If it's small, she has to defend the post. Uh, and all the skill sets has to be all around. But how do you notice uh, players about the, their decision making, and what, what, what is the process of um, selection? Well, first of all, they have to have talent in playing green. Uh, and, and again, I furthermore, they they should be versatile in uh, in in every which part of the or in every position they they have to play you know uh i think uh one, one point is they have to be comfortable in being in different position they cannot just be a point guard they cannot just be a shooter they cannot just be a a low post player uh at much often the not we, we go back on defense they can have to defend a big guy by a small girl uh, or a big guy can defend uh, a, a small guy. So you have to definitely be flexible in uh, in the selection uh, of your player. It doesn't mean you, you you have to have the biggest guy on on the court, but you know, but 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 she can she can do the other rules. That, that, that's how 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 I see it. And you cannot be the the best. Uh, dribbling guard on the court, but you can't do, you can play, and you, you can play defense, or you can shoot from the outside. So those are the criteria, probably, of having to select the two x three players. You know, they have to be versatile, and they have to play all position uh, on the court. They have to really defend. Definitely, one one particular aspect that I have to is you have to play defense. You cannot play three on three versus just playing offense. You gotta play defense, and that's basically one part that I have. You know, uh, I see too that they, if they play TXT on my team, they should be playing good defense.
Yeah, awesome. Uh, thanks a lot, Patrick. It was a great pleasure. Uh, you covered uh perfectly the topic i think i me myself i find a lot lots of interesting information uh, during our talk and i'm pretty sure it will be very valuable for all three x3 lovers all the coaches and all the young coaches um, who uh, actually are learning the game and learning to coach so thanks a lot uh even though we have a huge time difference uh there's great yeah. <laughs> now this time to meet uh so i will uh prepare the editing and i think i will put the, our session live uh on wednesday or thursday this week and i will make an announcement okay. so tomorrow i think uh yeah that's yeah. great and i i hope that uh how is actually about this uh pandemic situation in philippines uh how it's really it's, it's really very hard here you know uh, a lot of, uh, you know, we're in the third world country right here, but uh, we're really coping up and hopefully this, you know, uh, this pandemic goes fast and uh, I hope that, you know, they find a cure for it. But uh, we're, we're trying to survive here. There's a lot of people here in the Philippines, small country, but a lot of people. So we, the government is finding a hard time to, you know, uh, really provide things for them. Uh, but hopefully, uh, we can manage our everything and hopefully this passes through. And I'd like to say again, thank you, Dimitri, for inviting me here and saying all my thoughts about AXC and our topic, decision making. I hope, uh, I hope all the, the listeners, you know, or, uh, could learn a few things from my, what I said. And, uh, and it's, it's just, I'm just, you know, a approach that won't, uh, just stop learning. I, I mean, I still want to learn every bit of the game. It will be part of the game, not just uh, just me and watching videos. But you know, I also learn from how I watch or how the, my players play every day, and uh, that's that's the great part of uh, being a coach of basketball. It's not you know, just learning the game through experiences, but every day with working out with your players is uh, and playing the game itself. It's really, uh, it's really an incredible game, and uh, hope that you know this pandemic stops and everybody goes back to normal. That we could, you know, go back to all the tournament and play basketball again. <laughs> I've been missing a lot of coaching already. So yeah, again, thank that. you so much, Dimitri. Yeah, thank and you. you Thanks a lot. I think everyone is so hungry for the game now, and yeah, we're just mm -hmm. waiting for this things to end. Okay, thank you, Patrick, once again, and uh, have a nice yeah. day, evening. You know, I yeah. get a whole day <laughs> here, <laughs> but yeah. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.